everyone. I'm Tara Jones from Peaceful Solutions Riding and Training. And today we have a special guest, Miss Sarah Strauss from Days End Horse Farm Rescue and one of the horses that's up for adoption in Indiana. She's an eight year old thoroughbred. So Sarah always comes to visit me. She's one of my level two intensive course students and she's a spectacular rider, I must say. So she's going to help me with one of the exercises that's going to help immensely with your posting chart. So one of the things that always comes into play when anyone's working on posting trot or starting the posting trot, Sarah's riding dressage today, but this goes for English as well. A lot of times what happens with the rider is they don't necessarily get to the top of the rise. So the top of the rise is really important because that's going to be how you keep up with the horse's motion. A lot of times people half post or they just go halfway up or halfway back or they end up sitting in the saddle which is going to eventually put you in the hole of the hollow of the horse's back. So one of the things to remember is as a horse is moving or when a rider first gets on a horse, the most important aspect is that the horse's back will always be hollow because you haven't brought the horse's back up. So one of the things that I try to instill with my students, hi Indy, is that we're going to first go over with Sarah an exercise that you can just practice at home and I call it zipper pocket. It's so simple, but it, yet it's something that everybody kind of overlooks. So one of the things, if you haven't viewed my other videos already, is you wanna make sure that your stirrup leather is straight up and down. That's really important. The whole of the stirrup is forward towards 12 o'clock and the bottom of the stirrup is parallel with the ground. So that's your first checklist that you're going to go over to make sure that you can in fact stand up. If you find that you're standing up in the saddle and your lower leg slightly forward at a diagonal or it's slightly back at a diagonal, it's going to be really difficult for you to stand up and keep your lower leg underneath of you as a base of support. So I'm just going to have Sarah go ahead and stand straight up for me in what I call zipper. So Essentially, if she had a zipper in the front of her pants, it's going to be completely vertical, which she does, she said. So it's going to be completely vertical and up. Can you kind of show what it would look like if somebody didn't get all the way up? Yeah, they kind of do a halfway stand up point there. You can see that her zipper's at an angle here. That's not really what we're looking for. So go ahead and correct that and come all the way straight up. And you can see that her lower leg is straight underneath of her. Stirrup leather straight down, whole of the stirrup forward, bottom of the stirrup parallel. Again, really important. Now, I'm gonna ask Sarah to come back to pocket. Now pocket is essentially thinking about having a blot of paint right here. Okay, and then Sarah has the sponge right at the top of the area of her buttocks. Okay, so she's going to think about taking that sponge and taking it all the way back to the paint. So as far as she can go, yep, and then come all the way back up. So basically, zipper to pocket, zipper to pocket, zipper to pocket. So you can see her knee is almost becoming like the spot she pivots over. Her knee stays stationary, her lower leg is stationary as the rest of her goes from zipper to pocket. So essentially this is her posting trot momentum and this is the range of motion and as far as she wants to go because essentially she's staying in front of the hole of the back and behind the hole of the back. So I explain this part like a box because this gets confusing for people. If you have a box sitting here, and let's say you just opened that box, okay? You have the front edge of the box and the back edge of the box. She has to be really careful to come up and balance on the front end of that box without bending the box forward or backward, okay? And she also has to be careful that she delicately brings her body back and places it on the top edge of the box without folding it over. So as she comes forward, front end of the box and back edge of the box. Front end of the box and back edge of the box. Great. Okay, so some of the common problems that you might see, can you put your lower leg forward just a little bit? Okay, now try to stand up. It becomes really difficult for her, and if the horse was posing any forward momentum, she'd be flopping back in the saddle. This is sometimes what I see, and a lot of times this puts the riders kind of what I call in the back seat. They're behind the range of motion, they're using the horse for balance, and it becomes like the motorboat water skier motion. So go ahead and put your leg a little bit behind you. This kind of puts you in a nosedive onto the horse's neck. Yes, so you end up kind of falling forward and when you come back, you're flopping down in the back seat again. So either one of them is a very good scenario. You don't want to be in either one of those places. So one of the things that I always tell my students is be very cautious 
about building your body strength. You really want to make sure that your strength is well coordinated and help the horse to make sure that you can maintain your own balance at the top of the rise and you can maintain your balance to the back. And as you can see, Sarah's not really sitting when she comes down. So there's that slight moment of what I call static balance or where you could swipe a credit card beneath her saddle and her seat. <laughs> so she's going to be doing that phase of zipper pocket to in fact balance between the posting charts. So what we're gonna do now is Sarah's gonna go head out into the arena and I'm going to instruct her on the zipper pocket balance in the posting chart. So now we have Sarah and Indy and they're going around the square, which this was a previous exercise that we had talked about and I will provide the link below in the box of the square or the sparkle exercise that Indy and Sarah are traveling around upon. But you can see that when we look at body position and we look at Sarah as she's going through the posting shot, she's getting all the way up to zipper and all the way back to pocket. And that is really, really important because then she can keep up with Indy's movement, something very, very few riders can do or that they know how to do. Because it's, it's really neat that you can influence a horse's feet by your posting shot. So essentially when we look at Sarah's body, Indy that she needs to keep 
up with her seat. You do not see Sarah's legs making contact and coming away every single post. Can you do that too? When you add your leg on every single post, I see this a lot. I see people adding leg every time they rise. Now what's going to happen is one of two things. The horse is either going to become dull to your leg and it's going to become background music. They'll get duller and duller and duller. Or they're going to run away from your leg because they're too responsive to it and you're constantly adding it. So she has her leg on what I call cruise control. So she has where her posting, going from zipper to pocket, is keeping Indy forward. If Indy does not respond to that, she has her dressage whip to reinforce it. But you can see that the posting trot is a huge deal, getting to the top of the rise and back. So I hope this has helped. Zipper to pocket is a great exercise and one that you want to go over when you're riding your own horse. So once again, I'm Tara Jones. Thank you, Sarah Strauss, for joining me today and Indiana. And I'll see you guys on the next one.